In today's video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this coffee shop logo using Adobe Illustrator. To get started, I'm going to get you to jump into Illustrator and create a new document. The dimensions you need for this document uh, doesn't really matter too much. You are going to be using a vector file here, so you can scale it up and it's not going to lose any quality. So let's just start with 800 pixels width and 800 pixels for the height. Down in the advanced options tab at the bottom here, make sure your color mode is set to CMYK color and your raster effects are set to high quality at 300 pixels per inch. These couple of settings here will just make sure that your logo is ready for high quality printing. Click create when you're good to go and you will end up with a white canvas on your screen, which you can design your logo on. Now before we start designing our logo, one more thing you're going to need is an icon of a coffee cup. I've gone onto the Heritage Type Co website and I've downloaded this Coffee House Illustration set. We've got some rustic looking coffee images here that can be used in our design. I'm going to be using this coffee cup here when the time comes. Okay, we're not going to do that yet. What we're going to be doing is adding in all the circles that we need to create this logo. Just looking at the finished copy, you can see there are quite a number of circles around the border and on the inside of the logo here. So to get started on those, down in your toolbox, you'll have this ellipse tool. It might be hiding under your rectangle tool like this. So you need to hold your left mouse button down on the rectangle tool to access the ellipse tool. You can press the letter L for the shortcut. Now once you've selected the ellipse tool, you'll need to head to your properties panel on the right hand side. If you can't see your properties panel, just go to your window menu and select properties. Now we've got a fill color here. Uh, that we can change and we want to be choosing a brownie kind of color that's going to suit the coffee shop kind of theme. I'm going to go with that dark brown that um, Illustrator's got there. The stroke is just the border of the shape. We're going to hit the box with the red line going through it. That just says we don't want a stroke on our shape. And when you're ready to go, hold down shift, click and drag across the screen and you'll get a nice big brown circle. Now using your selection tool, you can click on that and we want to center it in the middle of the page. Probably the best way to do it is go to the Align section here in your Properties tab. Just hit those little three dots in the bottom right corner of that tab. And make sure the Align To section at the bottom is aligned to the artboard. Okay, now once we've got that selected, just click this button here that will horizontally align the circle in the center of the page. And this one here that will vertically align the circle in the center of the page. That circle now is smack bang in the middle of our artboard. Okay, and what we're going to do now is simply click on it with our selection tool and go to edit, copy, and edit, paste in front. So we now have a second brown circle right on top of the other one. And I'm going to change the fill color to white. And holding Alt and Shift on my keyboard, I'm going to resize that ever so slightly so we get a thin brown border around the outside there. So we've got a brown circle in the background that is just slightly larger than this white circle in the foreground. Now clicking on this white circle again with my selection tool, I'm going to go to edit and copy and edit, paste in front again. Control C to copy, Control F to paste in front are some good shortcut keys that you should be aware of. Once you've pasted it in front, change your fill color back to the brown that you selected before. And again, make it a bit smaller and you'll see that we've got this sort of look happening. Okay, we've got the brown circle here, you can see a bit of that white circle we put in, and then a bit of that first brown circle we put in originally. That's looking pretty good. We're going to do that all over again, so we're going to copy and paste in front again, and change the fill color back to white. And this time we're going to be making it, oh, let's say about that size there. So the brown circle that we see there is a little bit thicker than the snippet of brown circle we see in the background. Okay, that's looking pretty good. There's probably quicker ways to do this, but I'm just showing you the way that I know how to do it. Um, so if you know a better way, by all means do that. I'm going to click on this white circle that's in front of everything at the moment and do the copy and paste in front thing again. Change my color back to brown. And I'm going to make this a bit smaller. Let's say about this size here. Um, we're just going to do that copy and paste again. So. Edit, copy, edit, paste in front, change the color to white. We're nearly done now, by the way. Hold Shift and Alt, and we're going to make this a skinny brown line, a bit like the one on the outside of our logo. That's good, and for the final time, edit, copy, 
edit paste in front change the color back to brown and just using your selection tool drag that in while holding shift and alt to get something something like that so that's looking pretty good I'm happy with the shape of my circles if we go back and look at the completed copy you can get an idea on what we're creating Okay, it's probably time to bring in the coffee cup now and put it inside this circle. So I'm going to head over to my coffee house illustration set. Simply click on this. Control C to copy. And then Control V to paste. Now it comes out of brownie colour, so just change the fill colour to white. And to me, this coffee cup looks back to front. So I'm going to right click on it, transform it, and reflect it. And that's just going to flip it around. Click OK. Probably needs to be a little bit smaller. That's looking pretty good. And you can use your arrow keys if you want just to nudge that around until you're happy with its position inside of that circle. Should be somewhat centered. Okay, that's looking pretty good. What we need to really do now is add some text in this big white section around here. So the name of our coffee shop. What I'm going to do first though is just grab my ellipse tool and change the fill color back to brown. I'm just going to draw a couple little circles in here. So that's probably it. Oops. That's probably a good little size. Uh, once you've got that one there, click on it and make sure you hor uh, sorry, vertically align it in the center. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to copy and paste that. And using my arrow keys, I'll just nudge that across to the other side somewhere over there. We can play around those little circles in a moment, but they look actually look pretty good where they are. They should be in a similar position on either side of that circle. Okay, so we can nudge them around in just a moment. Oops. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to add in the text. Okay, I just need to make sure that's vertically centered first. They look a little bit wonky, but no, they're right. So adding in the text, what I want it to do is basically follow the path of a circle. So we've got the name of the business and a little slogan there underneath it. So I'm going to draw another circle. So grab your ellipse tool again. Um, I'm just going to switch the fill and the stroke color around. So I've got a brown stroke now and no fill color. And I basically want it to start from the center of that circle and go out to the center of the other circle on the other side. This is going to take a bit of mucking around here, but dragging this down. So we probably need it centered first of all. So let's just click on align center horizontally and vertically. Now that looks pretty good actually. Those little circles are in a very similar position. Yeah, I'm actually pretty happy with that. Um, what I might do though is just nudge these little circles across so they go straight through the center of that line. So I'm just clicking on them and using my arrow keys to nudge them across. Okay, that's looking good. Now I'm going to get my text to follow the path of this circle. Easiest to do in Illustrator. All you need to do is go to the text or type tool here, sorry, letter T. Hold your left mouse button down on it and select this second option, type on a path tool. Simply go and click right on your circle that you just drew and you'll see the pink word path appear. And it throws in some filler text there just um, while it waits for us to type in the text we want. So in capital letters, I'm going to write Coffee House. I'm going to highlight it, and in Properties, I'm going to change my font to one called Cafeta. That's a free download from defont.com. The link will be in the description of the video. Once we've got Cafeta, uh, the size will need to be a bit bigger. And don't stress that it's going outside the lines there. We're going to fix that in a moment. Uh, about, I'm going to go about 120 for now. And I'm going to play around with this tracking option here. It's currently set to zero, but I'm going to nudge that up. Might go about 80 there. Just nudge this size up a little bit more. Okay, that's looking all right. Now, to get this pushed down a little bit, I'm going to go to my type menu, type on a path, and select the type on a path options. I'm going to click preview and change this align to path from baseline to center. That just centers my text on that circle that we drew just a moment ago. If we click on OK, let's have a look at how this is looking. Okay, it's probably just a bit too big actually. I'm going to just resize this circle a little bit to pull it away from the edges up there. Okay, that's looking a bit better. 
I'm going to click on this text and use this little lever here at the end. See that your mouse cursor changes when you hover over it. Just click and drag that text back a little bit so it's evenly spread around the circle between those two dots. That looks pretty good. You can change the color of that text. Okay, so just highlight it and change the fill color there to that brown we've been using all along. And that's the top of our coffee house logo looking pretty flash. I like it. What we want to do now is simply get some text around the bottom side of that circle. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this text. We'll click on the circle actually. I'm going to go to copy and I'm going to go to paste in front. So we've now got a second set of text that says coffee house. I'm going to go up to my type menu and choose type on a path and choose the options again. I'll click the preview box and this time I'm going to flip the text. That's going to move it down to the bottom of the circle. So click OK. Drop your size right down. Let's try about size 36 to start with. And I'm going to turn this tracking right up to, let's say, about 200. That's going to put a fair bit of space between these letters. And using my type on a path, type on a path tool again, I'm going to double click on that text. And we're going to reword what's written there. And it's going to say premium quality coffee beans. And I'm going to use that little blue lever again just to twist it around a bit. I might have to do it in stages here. So it's probably going to be a bit fiddly. So just do it in little sections at a time. We want it to start roughly about there. So I'm going to need to highlight this text again and make it a bit, probably a little bit, actually probably a bit more spacing. So tracking between the letters will look good. Something like that. I don't really want the text any bigger than what it currently is. So it's just a matter of turning that tracking up. Okay, and that's looking pretty good. What I'm thinking is this middle section probably needs to be moved down a little bit. So I'm just going to deselect a few things here. And just hold shift and nudge it down a little bit. That doesn't look too bad. So up to you now how you fine tune this logo, but what I've got there looks pretty good. I guess I could probably just nudge this around a tiny bit more. Just so there's an even amount of white space between those white points there. Okay, so that is how you create a cool looking coffee shop logo using Adobe Illustrator.